Hey, Paul Otto, coming in with the Prime. Thank you so much for using your Prime and choosing my channel out of everyone on Twitch. Thank you so much. Appreciate the support. And of course, enjoy the emote, the 20 dice ad free viewing. Don't forget that legit sub badge. But appreciate the support. Let me know if you have any questions, man. And of course, hope you're having a good days and of course, a good Thursdays. All right, we have a lot of pipeline shenanigans going around. It's probably good, though. That goes up top. This goes here. This is both active. That's good. Two spawn. I mean, all these spawn lines are pretty active, except for this one, which is fine. And I still have an extra line here. Oh, this is getting warm, though, on this side. Uh, let me get two Wheeze Wards here. That's going to be something I'm probably going to have to do. Cooling down the gents from the other spawned side. We could also take the Radiant Piping and cool down the area, but it's probably not worth it. It's probably, I don't know. I might do it. I might do it. Let's see. Kitchen Menace. Operating Supply Ranch. And that's a pretty good combo. Yeah, we'll take this guy. Cool, cool. This is great. We have storage stockpiling. This is not running yet, but I think we're okay. And then... Yeah, still kind of chilling with that before I want to turn it on. So I think what we might want to do is... I think I need to get a third bathroom. It's kind of crazy to think about, but I think I need to get a third bathroom. <laughs> I might need to get a third bathroom. Oh, man. So I need to pipe up my water pipes. And then feed it out to a spawn. It's probably going to be the top one. I probably need to redo a lot of the buildings here, especially this pipeline. And we got to redo a lot of the stuff here. It's going to be fun. That water tank you put in nearly filled up by the looks of it. That filled up fast. Yeah, that's the thing. It's halfway filled. And I have two water tanks that we added in. I could actually probably have this one leave. So that we could remove as much as we can. At least for now. We gotta just remove water from the system. Let's see. I think what we do is... It's a weird strat. Okay, I think we don't think about the bathrooms yet. We still have to tank this. I think what I want to do now is move the Paku. I think I want to take the Paku and make a better ranching setup for them. While still maintaining the one tile storage. The problem is, is that this is a great location because they just flop from the printing pod. I want to move the Paku Ranch to the side, though. But having it here is so convenient. Due to the fact that we get it from the printing pod. I could make it flop to the bottom, but there's no way to catch them down there. Oh. Yeah, I guess that's the next best way to do it. Weird design, but it's probably fine. We basically move the Paku to here. And then we make a one-tile tank here instead, which is fine. And then what we do is... We do another ranching setup here that's separate. Alright, deconstruct that. That becomes a tile. And then we put an airflow here. And then we got to move the Paku over once we can. Uh, 
And then the easiest way to do that is just to be, uh, fill this up with water. And then we got to push up all the Paku. Is that a thing? Can I actually push them up? Or do they get entombed? Pakus get entombed, right? Ah, oh, that doesn't help. I guess that means I have to do like a sweep only dispenser setup. And slowly move the eggs. We could probably just grab the... Oh, they're going to be swimming in food poisoning. <laughs> oh, that's going to be gross. Sometimes I guess you gotta swim in food poisoning. Feels up, feels bad, man. Food poisoning fish. That's probably gonna be worth it though. So we'll slowly move them and then I'll make a ranching setup here because I have space. Temperature is gonna be pretty chill too. So virtual planetarium, that's fine right there. These are gonna be like little small little jobs. That I'll probably want to have. Maybe even move the Rock Crusher Exosuit Forge over there. If you lower the floor, you push them to the right, correct? Oh, I see what you're saying. Kind of. I, I wouldn't be able to move everybody. Because they're going to be able to just flow left and right. And then the only way for me to do it is to, like, get lucky. <laughs> And have everyone on there as I build the tile. Oh, I'm gonna automate this. Ah, oh, this doesn't fit. Ah, oh, it's too close. Damn it. I can't hit the dispenser from here. <laughs> they won't entomb if they have a tile to swim, I believe. Oh, interesting. I didn't know if that's a mechanic. Let's try it out. Decon your science station. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see the strats first. If Croconut's strat works, yo, man, we learned something today. And uh, yeah, that's a lot easier to move, the Paku. So we'll try to do that. And I will want to make a Paku ranching setup. Paku ranching setup. How do I want to do that? The problem with the Paku ranching is not having team eggs. So how do I want to do this? Because I, what I want to do is use Pakus to make omelets. I don't want to increase the number of Pakus, although that's cool. Omelets are more efficient KCAL wise. So that's actually why I want to do it that way. So is there enough water? Yeah, they're all flopping. They need uh, more water. <laughs> oh, dude, the lag. There's so many eyeballs staring at me, dude. Feels weird, man. Where's the water level at? 250? We should be good. Is it 250? 350. Fish party, man. I don't like seafood, dude. So everyone's invited. Y'all can eat the Paku for me. I'm not a fan of the seafoods. I'm sorry, you guys. What's going on, Grandpas? I see you over there. I actually don't know how many Pakus I have. Okay, so we're good. Alright, so... Push that over. Super good, and you were doing alright, man. Making some advancements for uh, the duplicates right now. We're at 47. I want to get as much as we can. Oh, did they not actually get entombed? The fish eggs got pushed up. Wait a second. Is he clipped in? 
I had to build another tile. Oh, they could move out. <gasps> they're moving out. Oh, they're scared of blueprints. Hit them with the blueprint. Move over to the right, man. Mesh tile, baby. Wait, this guy, is he inside? No, he, they get pushed out. That's pretty cool. They're getting pushed out, dude. That's a good strat. I finally start to like ribbon. You could do many stuff without uh, make the bridge. Yeah. There's just a lot of stuff you can do on the ribbon cables, man. It's just, I haven't explored it myself. Crocodile, thank you for the strat. Seems like it's working perfectly. And they all move over to the one tile. They know when something's being built. The Pakus are smart. The Pakus are smart. Unlike me, I just created another flood. Alright, so the bottom empty is going to be removed. We got to do this. What's going on, Poeta Gardas? How are you? I see you over there. Happy Thursdays, man. The weekend is almost here. Today we learned Pakus are smarter than dupes. <laughs> Today we learned Pakus are smarter than dupes. Be like that sometimes. Alright, so let's think about this for a second. If we want to do a Paku ranch to multiply the eggs, we're going to have a Paku with a fish feeder, right? That's going to be here. We have a water tank. That means this room is going to be where we drop off the food. Fish is going to be here, which is going to be cool. And then we have to have another. How do we refill the fish? I probably want to set up an automation. So fish lays eggs. I forget the I forget the rate. This run is 400. Are we taking dupes at every uh, pot print? Pretty much. I undershot it though. I want to hit 100, but I forget that. In one full stream, I'll stream for like seven, eight hours. I will only go through like 80 cycles. And at three cycles per duplicate, I'm at most going to get like 20, 25. So I'm actually not going to hit the target number today. Because it's just going to take too long to simulate. <laughs> so it feels bad, man. But yeah, we're going to be taking all the dupes as we can now. That's actually what we're doing. So yeah, we want to wrap up the amount of duplicates we have in the colony. Problem is, is that, uh, you know, it's a little bit slow, but you know, we got to do what we got to do. All right, we could do this, could do that. This is fine. We need to continue mining some of the other areas. Mine this part and then sweep the water probably and then I need to start mining out this part as well playing on one speed doesn't help that's true I was on 3x speed but I had some bad things happen <laughs> the 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 toilet water got maxed out feels bad man toilet water we had we had six messes today Feels bad, dude. 2,500 hours in, still have duplicates peeing their pants. It's one of those things, man. No matter how experienced you are in this game, it still happens. How was legit today? We're doing all right. I'm jealous of Mamba, though. You see the kitty cat Mamba in the background? He has his feet up, sleeping on his back. Like, come on, man. When a cat's like that, you know he's chilling. You know he's chilling, man. Sleeping on his back, got his feet up, dude. Kind of jealous. Hey, dude, legit, I'm about to go watch the VOD of this playthrough. But I thought I'd ask for any advice getting out of the beginning of the game. Like, I don't know what to do next uh, once the basic base is set up. So, uh, are you playing on the classic version or the spaced out version? The biggest difference is the size of your asteroid that you're playing on. And whether or not you have a teleporter accessible. All classic. Okay, so are you playing with the DLC or is it uh, just classic start with DLC? It could be also base game, which means you don't get some of the DLC aspects. 
but then from there i'm assuming you have oxygen production a little bit of food you got some of the uh you know refinement going on maybe processing i don't have space that okay so you know you have basic food basic oxygen generation what you're going to want to do after you get that and you have like a base you're going to want to explore your map so if you hover over the top left over your cycle count you'll get something called your modifiers you could see under where it says a borea right there i have a frozen core which means my core is made out of ice and then i have a subsurface ocean which means i have a lot of salt water on the top of the map so if your modifiers do not have either geo dormant or geo active those are geyser modifiers you're going to want to look for 12 geysers geysers look like this you get four tiles of neutronium right here neutronium and then you have obsidian and granite in a four by four formation or even larger and you need to find 12 of these because you're looking for a water source so one of the water sources you can find is something like a cool slush geyser like this that gives you polluted water but it's very cold negative 10 and then you know there's other variations as well you're looking for a water geyser and you want to explore as much as your map as possible so i'm playing classic base game right now you could see that i still have a corner of the map that i don't have explored but that's ideally what you want to look for you want to uncover as much as the map as you can if there's a space you can't go into like the oil biome that's really hot this is enough to damage your dupes until they die because the temperature is too hot right you probably can't explore it and you know you kind of have to save that for later but if you can explore as much as you can of as many parts of the map as you can you're looking for as many of the geysers as you can and then you're looking for uh a water geyser so there's different forms of water geyser ideally you want to look for a cold water geyser because that's the most uh friendly in terms of usage without suits and then once you do that, you want to make a SPOM. A SPOM is a self-powered oxygen machine. And that's going to mean that you're able to indefinitely produce oxygen as long as you have water. And then it's self-powering because you produce hydrogen as well. Once you get that, you're able to basically stabilize and get to the next step, which is making steel, making refined metals, making Atmo suits, getting plastic. And then you need to get suits, basically these suits right here, so that you're protected from the hot environment, which is typically going to be your oil biome at the bottom of the map. Because if you go in without suits, your dupes are going to take damage and die. But if you have suits, they're protected. So that's going to be your immediate goal because you're going to want to tap into crude oil. Crude oil is going to be at the bottom of the map most of the time. And the reason why you want it is because you can refine it to either petroleum and then that also becomes plastic. And you're going to need that in order to beat the game. So that's going to be your next step. If you get to this point and you're looking for something else to do, you're looking to process steel. And this is a tricky element because it requires a lot of things. Iron, refined carbon, and then lime. So you're going to have to figure out how to get all three of these resources and have it be somewhat of a regularly occurring source. So lime is probably going to be from ranching. So you might have to start ranching a lot of critters because when they hatch eggshells, you could go to your rock crusher and convert eggshells to lime, which is a very popular source. So that's going to be what you're going to have to do next. Hopefully that helps. E-records. Uh, let me know if you're confused on any of the spots. If I skip the step or if you don't understand what I mean by what I say, let me know. I'll be happy to help. Out for tonight. Have a good one. Tony, I see you over there. Have a good one, legit. And I'll see you next time. Be good, Tony. I know you're probably working hard over there, but yo, man, you got to make sure to rest as well. Have a good one, man. We'll see you next time. What's the trick you use to work out what geyser it is without digging it out? Yes. So this is going to be a good trick for e-records as well. If you don't know what geyser is underneath the uh, neutronium and the tiles and you don't want to dig it out, you're going to want to use the priority tool. Click on the exclamation mark and then cover up the entire geyser. Now, you have to make sure it's on all as well. So once you do that, you'll get a pop-up right here. You want to click on it, and it tells you what geyser it is. After that, instead of having the yellow alert consist and keep running, you're just going to want to click on one of the numbers. I use the numbers as a priority system for myself, so I know what type of geyser it is. So priority nines are very important geysers. Volcano is one of them. 
And that's going to be the easiest way to do that. Priority, yep, Mighty Switch knows. Poetic Artist knows as well. Have you ever, uh, Pangar, what's up, man? Hey, too legit. Ever done a playthrough on the minimap mod? I did, just like, two years ago. I haven't touched it since because it was broken when the DLC came out. Is it fixed? Is the mini base mod fixed now? Yeah, I have 250 hours, but trying to get refinery steel usually gets stuck with heat. Maybe I'll I'm going to it uh, going to it too quickly. Yeah, you're gonna want uh, Atmos suits. That's a lot of the times people don't understand what the point of this is. Getting the suit docks, having an oxygen tank, and then you could explore a lot freely. So this is gonna be the next kind of like breakthrough you're gonna have, and then you're gonna be able to just go through everything. How do you manage heat at the beginning, making steel and iron? Ah, so it depends how you want to do it. Right now, what I'm doing is because I have a subsurface ocean as one of my map modifiers, I have a lot of water. I have water here, water here, water here, water here, water here. And it's at 30 degrees. It's very cool water. So I actually use this water into my meta refinery with a pump right here. You could see and then once the water gets too hot, I dump it out to a desalinator, filter it out into regular water, and I feed it into my spawn. So I feed that into my electrolyzers, and they convert that into water, I mean, uh, into oxygen and hydrogen. So that's what I do because I have a lot of water. If you don't have this option, one of the popular methods for utilizing the meta refinery is doing something like this. Let me give you an example. So, typically, you will have your meta refinery, and the popular strat requires plastic, but what you would do is do something like this. You would put a steam turbine here. You would probably put an aqua tuner here. And then you would run your output metals in a radiant pipe setup into the steam turbine. Now you might be thinking, how does that work? You're actually gonna want to use oil because oil has a insane range for temperature, negative 40 to positive 399. And by doing that, you could make a system that actually powers the steam turbine because you convert the heat onto the oil and then you dump the heat into the steam box. Now, of course, this is an example. You're probably going to build a larger design than this, right? So that you get more radiant piping, right? And then you use this to cool everything. Uh, you cool it down with the steam turbine and you get power out of that. So after you do that, there's a more elaborate setup. You can make it so that you could have this running constantly because what you're going to have to have is a shutoff at a certain part with a temperature check. Now, don't copy this design. This is very rough around the edges. If you want to see a design like this, I recommend going to my YouTube channel and looking for the meta refinery power setup that I have in one of my videos. It tells you exactly what you need to do to build this, some of the steps you need to take. And then once you do that, you basically convert your meta refinery into a power source. If you actually do everything in the video properly, this actually becomes power positive. Meaning that after you make steel and specifically only steel, you generate enough power with a steam turbine to power your metal refinery and then some. But it's it's a weird design though. So I recommend checking that out. Sounds like I need to explore more to get the spawn set up and work a little bit slower towards refinery. Yep. A lot of the times before you get into the mid game, in my opinion, you need to include oxygen. And because that's the easiest way for you to die. Uh, you eventually run out of algae, right? That's going to be the typical source of uh, oxygen for a lot of people. You have so little algae in your map, regardless of what you're playing on. Unless, of course, you're playing on, like, Verdante, which is, like, all slime everywhere. Damn, Grandpa's Nat 20? I see you over there. This guy's not messing around. You got to change your name back, man. <laughs> you got to change your name back. I'm just kidding, man. You don't got to do it. But uh, once you get oxygen from a water source, from a geyser, you can't lose. Which is why I recommend exploring when you can. Find a water geyser and then feed a spawn so you always have oxygen. 
And at that point, it becomes a balancing act between uh, producing enough oxygen from the electrolyzer spawn design and having enough dupes either under consume or over consume. No, Dr. Duckling, I'm sorry, man. That's sub only. It's sub only for the D20 dice. Feels bad, man. But yes, exploration is going to help out with that. And uh, hopefully that helps. Start with a refinery away from your base. Dump the water into a large pool and uh, water the spruce. That works too. A lot of the times that strat's only if you're not actually planning on playing that long, like doing a speed run. Magic just found a cool slush geyser. Nice half pint. It's uh, That's the best geyser in the base game, arguably. There's workaround to use mod with DLC. No idea how. Oh, there is, huh? This still It still doesn't work though. Feels bad. I was think infinite tank work on the vanilla. It should. I don't know if there's any DLC specific strats like that. Going good, my guy. Friday for me. Haven't played minimap yet. Saw someone on YouTube do a playthrough, so I think it might be fixed. Okay. I have to check that out. Because the last time I checked out the minimap mod, it was broken. A good way to get a little plastic early is to wrangle a wild dracko, drop them into your mealwood farm early on, and eventually they'll get a glossy egg. That's true too. Gun Griffin is right. The only thing you're worried about is that the dracko, um, in the beginning of the game, the dracko's in the jungle biomes right here, they actually spawn in at 65 degrees. So when you drop a dracko on your mealwood farm like that, you're heating up your dracos. I mean, heating up your mealwoods. So you could actually bop your farms by having the Dracos be too hot. So watch out for that. Nightbot, Nightbot knows, dude. Nightbot is what it is. Grandpa's got to ask a question, dude. That's a nice way to explore, I guess. Dig everything. I mean, it's, it's a good strat. It's up to you, though, if you want to actually do that. Heat death. Yeah, man, watch out for that. Ranch suit wearing farming slow learner. He's not gonna be a good rancher. Narcolepsy. We take a second narcoleptic dupe. This guy's a rancher with critter version. Yeah, we're taking Bert. We got Bert Reynolds. Join it in the colonies. Good times. Alright, alright. So what was I talking about? What was I doing just right now? I completely forgot, man. I'm not gonna lie. We got water spilling everywhere still. What was I doing? I was mining out pops of the map. Okay, so oh, sweep, sweep the water, mine this out, sweep this water. We need to mine out this part of the map. Oh, moving Paku, that's right. All right, so we need to make a fish farm because I want to make fish eggs. We need to have some caviar for the dupes. So I wanted to do a fish setup here and we could have it basically eat, poop out eggs, sweep the eggs out. And I think it becomes a thing where, how do I drop off an egg into the same room? No, no, don't worry, E-Records, no worries. If you guys need help, I'm happy to help, man. Don't worry about it, don't gotta apologize. It's all good, man. Love the streams when I could catch it. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out the YouTubes. You have a lot of uh, guides and uh, builds and designs on there as well to probably lead you to the right way. I am also coming out with a video suit that's going to be going over the overview of the game. So exactly what you're talking about, not knowing what to do next, how to approach the next step. We're going to be doing a video for that, actually. Got to head out. Check out the VOD in the morning. Good night, all. Have a good one, Zandroff. We'll see you next time. Rest well, rest easy, and hope you have a great night. See you next time. Man. Bomba's actually doing that emote right now. He's just laying down while doing it. <laughs> Which DLC asteroid is best for Carnivore? Uh, Terra. Terra start with... Uh... Terra start with classic start. Terra classic start. Does that make sense? Zip zip. Terra classic start. So classic start is when you have this size of the map. And ideally you're looking for a map that starts you off near the top. And the, the reasoning behind it is Terra is great because you get hatches. Hatches give you 3,200 
kilograms of meat versus like pips and sweetos only give you 1600 so your base critter is a little bit stronger and the second thing about it is that you want to get to the top of the map because you get shovels in the classic start these guys if you didn't know these guys give you 16,000 k cows of meat and if you cook it it becomes 20,000 k cows so that means you beat carnivore if you find 20 shovels because you get 20,000 per shovel and you only need 400,000 so you literally get carnivore by just finding 20 shovels ideally you're gonna want to find 20 but you're probably not going to get that much spawned on your map so you're probably going to look to ranch them groom them keep them happy so you get an egg before you kill them and then once you do that that's all you need to do uh theoretically if you don't want to do terra start there is a slime start i think that's pretty good because one of the problems with exploring the map to reach the shovels is you don't have uh atmo suits and then sometimes the biomes are unbreathable so going up and down is going to be a struggle. So looking for a map that has like a lot of polluted oxygen naturally, like the uh, DLC starts, I think there's like metallic swamp, things like that, where you have a lot of like mud, polluted mud, polluted dirt tiles, maybe even just pools of polluted water. They provide oxygen for your dupes, even though you get the yucky lungs debuff. It's, it's worthwhile to just go through that and then reach the top of the map to start ranching your shovels. But that's going to be the easiest way, I would say. So any classic will fit easy surface reach, like Aborea, Verdante. Yep, 100%. Verdante, Aborea, same same thing. Same uh, logic. A lot of slime, so they're able to breathe and do their things. All right, so we have the Arbor Seeds here. And then he was not able to actually put the plants in because we've been sweeping the seeds too fast. Feels bad, man. Thanks, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so fish feeder, and then how do I want to make an automation for this? Oh. Does that work? How, how, what is it? How does that work? Uh... How does that work? So a Paku lays an egg. The egg... Oh, they flopped in. Feels bad. Do I have any more Paku eggs? I have five. I need to select one. Nice. They do take five cycles. Damn, that's too fast. <laughs> that's actually too fast. So they take five cycles to hatch. If I move a Paku into here, and he's teamed from the get-go, so they take, what is it? They give you two eggs in three cycles, right? So that means we'll get around what? 20 6 we get about 18 eggs no 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 no. yeah three cycles we get two eggs we get 12 eggs 12 to 13 so can i make an automation setup that makes it so that i could make it so that they don't have to do anything weird and it just refills itself i'm thinking about making a separate room and then they flop back into the water. But then we have to move the egg early. Okay, so regardless, I think we're going to need tiles here. We're going to go with a 3x3 tank. Double deconstruct. We'll probably want to do it like that so no one gets trapped. And then we're going to need a fish feeder in the middle. Now, I'll probably want to seal up the room as well. We'll just do it like that for now. And then I'm probably going to need it like this. So we sweep the egg out, right? And it flopped towards the tank. If there's an egg in here, we don't drop off an egg, which makes sense. 
But the problem is, is that how do we make it so that we drop off an egg when we need it? Ah, that's a pain. That's really a pain. I don't want to look at my video with automatic video. <laughs> I, that's, that's too much automation. I don't know how to deal with that right now. So we could sweep the egg out with a sweeper. Most likely it's going to be like that. We're going to use seeds so we don't have to automate the feeding. The sweeper sweeps the eggs. We put it on a loader. The loader does its thing. That's all cool. I probably want this here to be able to climb down. And then sweeper loader drop off setup. We could probably use a critter sensor to not use the shoot drop off. And then we need another automation setup. So I think the best way, hey, too legit. Have you ever made this weird tree that needs like 90,000 kcals per day and poops out of material? Oh, you're talking about the resin tree. Yeah, what about it? You're talking about the resin tree on that slimy asteroid with the slime everywhere and the puffs and the polluted water. And then if your dupes walk up to it, he gets caught with an uppercut. But bow Mike Tyson style. Dupes take damage. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're talking about that thing, man? The Whomping Willow? I know about that. I saw someone work out the food requirements. It's crazy. The thing is, is that it's it's supposed to be gluttonous, if that makes sense. It's supposed to eat as much as it can, and you don't need to feed it all the way. It just converts kcals into another resource. So it's like, yeah, you could try to feed it as much as it can, but it's it's going to eat nonstop <laughs> until it's pooping. When it poops, it doesn't eat anymore. It could either poop or eat. It can't do both. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you don't need to feed it. If you don't feed it, it doesn't die. The only way it dies is if it uh, gets too hot in the area. All right, so that's going to be how we fill this up with water. So what I think we do is we drop a shoot. When the shoot drops off an egg... The egg hatches in, what is it, three cycles? In five cycles, right? So in five cycles, it hatches an egg. So how does this work? So let's say that the age of the inside doesn't matter because we want to work off this trigger as a signal. So if we drop the egg, we have five cycles. Is it the timer sensor that does that? So here's the logic. We drop an egg off that's already tame. And then what happens is, is that it sits and triggers a critter sensor. I usually have a room that gets eggs based on cycle automation. The rest of my eggs become food. Yeah, I'm trying to do the same thing. And I'm trying to like think about the automation process that I need to actually fulfill. So because we dropped the egg off, we could use a critter sensor to basically have everything start rolling. Or... We could probably use a weight plate. Use a weight plate, drop the egg on it. Times one is psychos mode, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a psycho mode for that. So I'm thinking we could use something like that. Make the wall out of glass or diamond. So it's a proper fish tank. All right, I got you, Cthulhu. Get the proper fish tanks. Got to make the upgrades. The things we got to do, man, to appease chat. So, let's see, let's see. Let's say that we use a critter sensor. And 
When there's no critter, we drop an egg. When there is one egg, we close the shoot. That's simple. But how else can we do it? We can make it so that if there's a critter in the room, are you the colony could do low? He has two characters. One of them was him, and one of them is his is his dad. <laughs> We got we got Cthulhu, and then we also got Big Cthulhu. <laughs> Him and his dad. You ever seen that meme? Don't talk to me and my son ever again. That's that's Cthulhu right there, man. His dad's in construction. He's a youngster with a baseball cap. One of them is a fraud. You can't talk to your dad like that, man. Come on, Cthulhu. You gotta respect the elders. Show them a little bit of respect. Y'all see this guy, man? He's he's lashing back. He's in he's in that phase, the rebellious phase. <laughs> and he's he's gonna start being like, this is not a phase, mom. <laughs> oh man. So so critter sensor controls a shoot, that's fair. Can we do another thing where we have a second critter sensor? Where if we detect a critter. Because it's going to have to manually flop out. So when it hatches, we detect the critter. And then it will naturally flop towards the water. Right? That's just natural Paku habits. So when the critter leaves the room, we have that trigger a sensor. And then we have that go for 20 cycles. Because in the last... 21 to 25 age we should get two to three eggs right so we could just use one of them and then by the time that egg hatches the original one is dead would it be triggered if dupes walk on the top i'm say oh no i'm not using weight plane i'm using a double critter sensors instead so one critter sensor to control the shoot and one critter sensor to control the second shoot or well both of them control the shoot but it's going to be a little bit weird So we would have to have a AND gate, I think. And then the gate I'm looking for. Because the problem with the timer sensor is that it's constantly rolling. It doesn't stop, right? That's the problem with this. It doesn't stop. It probably has to be like a buffer filter combo. Or we use a signal counter. Use a timer plus a valve. Timer plus a meter. I don't know if that's what I want though. That doesn't, that doesn't, see, the thing is that I could see how that works, but it doesn't seem like it's foolproof. If that makes sense. It doesn't feel like that's a foolproof design. Because the problem you have, I have with a timer is that it's rolling regardless of what you do. It's constantly just rolling, regardless of the signal it's getting, right? That's kind of the problem I have with that. If this started counting, the moment I had something else trigger it, that would be perfect. And that's kind of where the signal counter actually comes in, right? That's kind of where this comes into play. So 20 cycles, that's what? I could use one by doing uh, six filters into one signal counter instead of just three. Or, hmm.
Yeah, that's yeah, mm, damn it. God damn it. I'm just trying to figure this out. I think I do need to use like seven filter gates, eight filter gates, and then a signal counter. And then we could actually have it so that it's it's actually somewhat perfect. So there's no signals in here, that doesn't matter. So for the time being, I'm just gonna put two critter sensors because we know we're gonna need it. Actually, no. We know we need a shoot. The shoot doesn't matter. I'll put it on the ground. And the shoot needs to be turned on from... Oh, now the signals are going to be missed up. Yeah, because... After... Okay, so... Shoot number one. If there is no egg in the room, we allow the egg to come out. Right? That's going to be critter sensor number one. Critter sensor number two is going to be if there's a critter in the room, red signal. But then once the critter leaves, we have a green signal. And then double green. Green here, green here. No egg, no critter. We allow the egg. That's true. Now the problem is, is that I want the egg after 20 cycles. So... After we release it and we get a green signal, we have to filter it. For 20 cycles? Wait, that doesn't make sense. I would have to make a weird loop. But that does work though, because it's going to stay green. Yeah, it's going to stay green. Is the uh, is this still just two hundred seconds? That would be perfect. Uh, it would be like that, and then let's use a signal switch. So it's like that, like that, and then outputs when I get green signal. So that goes into the reset, and then this feeds into the AND gate. So I don't need to attach anything. I just need to see the signal color. And then all we have to do is add an AND gate and two critter sensors to this. This basically is going to be the critter sensor, and then we have a second one on the AND gate for the second signal. And then we get something perfect, I think. I think this is what we're looking for. Alright, so this needs to count out to 10. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10. No advance mode. Oh no, we do need advance mode. Ah, so when it goes like that, we need a flip-flop. So that's the second thing we need right now, a flip-flop. So, max slider is 200. Ah, feels bad. So, how do I want to do this? How do I cut the signal? How do I make a flip-flop in this game? Oh, that's a memory gate, right? Oh, I mean, XOR gate, right? We send a green signal when it's one green, one red. And then once the filter comes out, we send double green, which makes it red. And then once we get a red signal here, this becomes a red signal while the green signal stays as a green signal. And then we get a perfect setup. I think that works. I think that works. I might be wrong, but I think that works. What are we thinking about? I want to do a little bit of fish automation. This ends up being exactly like my YouTube video, though. That's the problem. <laughs> this is exactly my YouTube video. The signal counter, filter gate, shenanigans. Uh... 
I, I will do this live instead of actually doing it in sandbox. I think it's fine. All right, so we could use this to represent how that works. So let me deconstruct that. I am looking for something that's a XOR gate. So that's going to be like that. No. Can you repeat what you want the sequence signals to be like? I want to have a AND gate control a shoot. The first AND gate signal is going to be a critter sensor. That's going to send a green signal if there is no egg in the room. So that we open the shoot and drop off an egg. The second signal is going to come from the signal counter. And this signal counter's job is to wait 20 cycles after the fish hatches and leaves the room. So that's going to be a combination of critter sensors, filter gates, and XOR gate. Now, to make it a little bit simpler to understand, I want to have one egg drop off every 20 cycles after the fish leaves the room. Because when the fish leaves the room, it has to take five cycles to grow. And then uh, we'll drop off an egg after that. And then I wanted to basically capture an egg between ages 20 and 25. Because it takes an egg five cycles to hatch. That way we get an egg in its last couple of cycles before it dies. So because of that sweet spot timing... I want to make it so that dupes don't have to like drop it back off. If that makes sense. Alright, so I think what we need is an XOR gate. So I can make a flip-flop, right? So it's going to be like this. And then we have this off of a signal switch, which is going to be my critter sensor. And then the next thing it's going to be that. Because we need to flip-flop the signal. I am suggest making a room for six fish. <laughs> I don't want to do that, man. I want to do one at a time. At five breeders. Oh, shit. Too much power. There we go. It went to zero seconds for some reason. So it does work. So what I thought was going to work does actually work. So we do this five seconds. So we go down. Bam. Flip flops. Four. Bam. Flip flops. Five. Right. And it's, it's basically counting down the cycles. That's basically what we're trying to do. We're counting down the cycles. And then once we get to 10, because this starts at 0, it's going to go to 9. And then it's going to go to 10, and it's going to reset. And then that resets the entire build. So then that's going to be 20 cycles. And it starts over 1, 2, 3, all the way to 10 again. It's good. Space amount of keeping one egg incubating nearby. So I think this is what I want. I think this is what I want. I, I don't actually know. So we're going to build it and hope for the best. So we know at the end of the day, this comes from a hand gate. And a critter sensor. All right, and then we have to have something called an XOR gate, do a flip-flop for the signal counter, which is going to be the second signal. So this is going to be like that. This goes into here, that goes into here, into the reset. This goes into the shoot. This is going to be coming in from the critter sensor in here into the filter gate setup. So we need to have six filter gates because it's, I want to have 1200 seconds. 
So one, two. Oh shit. Three, four, five, six. Does this work? We just need six, right? 200 times six, that's 1200 seconds. And then we have a critter sensor here. And then this goes in like so. Here, 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 here. No, 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 no. We're doing 1,200 seconds. No, the timer sensor, I explained the problem with that. The timer is constantly rolling, so it could be counting in the middle of the, the timer, if that makes sense. Your timer is constantly rolling. It doesn't pause for anything. It constantly just ticks down. So when I'm using the trigger for that, it doesn't actually have any accuracy because the problem you run into is you could be in the middle of the 10 cycles, 20 cycles. You don't know where you are in the timer when your triggers actually occur. So you're going to get a lot of overlap where you have more than one Pocky in the fish tank because you're going to deliver an egg early or you might not even deliver an egg at all because this doesn't happen to line up. So that's the problem with using the timer sensor. There's nothing to kind of kickstart the timer to forcefully turn on. And that's, I don't know if that's by what Clay wanted, but that's one of the problems with it. Ooh, Pipex. I need to take the dupe though. So we're gonna take this guy. Since it doesn't know if something actually happens. Yep, 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 yep. Leo Fardos, Leo Fardos. So this is gonna be 200 copy paste. This is gonna be eggs only. Green signal if it's above zero. No, no, no. Below one. If no eggs, open the chute. So this is going to be green. If it's critters is... Below one. When there is a critter, so there is exactly one in here because the egg hatches. The pocket is going to flop out. When it flops out, we start the green signal again. Wait a second. Uh, this is not advanced mode, actually. This is not actually advanced because we need this to be a continuous green signal, not a pulse. So we do not want an advanced mode. Now, the problem with this is when I reset it. I think my reset signal is wrong. Does that make sense? I think my reset is wrong. Add a delay before the reset. But the delay is going to vary. That's the problem. The delay varies. Because we don't know how long it's going to take for the Paku to actually lay another egg. It could be a half cycle, it could be immediate, it could be a full cycle later. Because it's a cycle and a half per egg, right? So I want a continuous green. And I don't want to count early. So right now we have green signal, green signal, and we're waiting for the counter. So let me do all of these to one second. So we count one. Oh, I didn't do the flip-flop. Oh, oof, messed up, messed up. Uh, God damn it. I didn't do the flip-flop with the XOR gate. I don't understand what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, I want to never have more than one egg in the room. And I want to have exactly one egg at the near death cycle of the Paku. Basically, we always get one egg when the uh, Paku is about to die. So once the Paku is at age 20, it's going to lay three eggs in that lifespan from 20 to 25, assuming it's tame and fed then what happens is that I need one of those three eggs specifically and not any of the 
eight or nine before that to be selected. And what that ends up doing is that guarantees we never have more than one fish in the breeder room. Because otherwise that they're going to have, uh, you know, some issues. Eventually, if you get too many fish in the breeding room, you know, some fish are just going to die. And that means I lose food. Okay, so I messed this up because I needed to add an XOR gate here. Uh, let me just manually do this. What's wrong with the conveyor bridge gap trick? What do you mean, Dr. Duckling? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you're talking about using a conveyor rail element sensor in the middle of a bridge and using that to count. That's the idea, right? Dr. Duncan, I think I'm following with that. You build a conveyor rail with a setup with the element center in the middle. I don't know what the conveyor bridge gap trick is then. I don't know what you're talking about. So what I'm thinking you're talking about is this. You run a rail that comes from a loader. And then every time it's uh, coming in, you actually connect the inputs like that. It comes in and then it goes backwards one time before coming back out. So you count the element in the middle. Something like a counter, right? So that's that's the setup that I think it's it. Now, the problem with this is that... You would have to pick... I mean, I guess that could work. That could work. Yeah, instead of counting time on the cycle, you count the eggs. So we would be specifically aiming for, because you do five and then five. Yeah, 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 that's true. They do. I mean, at the, at the same thing, it's like, you're doing the same thing though. Instead of using a six filter gate setup, you're just using the eggs like that. Right? Isn't that the same thing? But a lot less automation? I guess. That goes in, that goes in. Does that actually work, though? Why do I feel like this jams? This doesn't jam, right? You let X eggs through, go back to the hatchery, reset the, uh, the counter. Doesn't this go backwards and then forwards? Don't you want just one egg every 25 cycles? Mm, I mean, that's true, but if your Paku dies and doesn't give you an egg before it dies, you literally just have an empty tank. So you want it every 20 cycles. Due to the fact that uh, it takes five cycles to hatch. So the, by, the time, by the time your Paku hatches, your baby Paku from, or your adult Paku from before is dead. Bridge just creates a gap in case there are multiple eggs on the rail. So the bridge gap isn't necessary. So we just run a conveyor, you run a rail, and then you run a element sensor on that. Oh, you would I guess you would use all three sensors then. 
you would have to use all three sensors. I guess that's the, the way you get around that. Because you, you have three different eggs. You have a chance of laying. <laughs> so you run three element sensors. One for, one for the pocket egg, one for the tropical, and one for the goldfish. And then you run that into a timer. Or a signal counter. I see you with that, Leo Fire. I want to do one at a time if possible. So you run that. We don't need a bridge. We're going to run separate lines. We could bridge everything on after we do the signal counter setup, to be honest. And then we run the automation here, which is the same thing. So... Hmm. Or you set the sensor into a wrong element and then not gate it to make it correct. No, that means it's constantly red, uh, green. It never turns red. Oh, no, it, it turns red when you get... So you can't do that because it just never actually flickers. You just constantly get a green signal. Right? If that makes sense. Because you're constantly detecting the rail, whether something's passing or not. So you're constantly getting a red signal until something flies over it that matches. So that idea doesn't work. Avian Nightmare, I see you over there, man. Let me know if you have any questions. If you want to, if I have trouble following along, I'll try to do my best to explain. <laughs> Honestly, I think what we have works. And it's like, I think I'm just going to do this. <laughs> Memory toggle, yeah, I mean, I, I, you could do that. But I don't want to think through that. Critter sensor, yeah, we're using that. We're using the critter sensors right now. Hope no gulp. Uh, RNG, man. One one bad run. The last day becomes gulpfish and you lose. So, three, two eggs. So, three, six, nine. It's exactly on cycle 20. We will get an egg. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. You can't lay eggs before age five. So, that's age 20. So five, that's 10 eggs. So on the 10th egg. Oh, yeah. We have to pick exactly the last egg. We have to pick exactly the last egg. Because if we choose any of the eggs before that, it doesn't work. Because you start counting again, right? So if I choose a 10th egg, there's still two, three more eggs afterwards. That it's going to start on the new counter. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do the, the egg trick. We're going to use uh, this better. This is a little bit more consistent because we get... It's a little bit more complicated because we're counting cycles. But we have more active fish. Because if we have to count the last egg of the Paku, we have to wait two, three cycles for it to start laying eggs again. Well, it's, it's actually five cycles. And then you have to choose the last egg. Otherwise, it doesn't work for that egg element sensor trick. You would never have to worry about the sensors uh, not being green for long enough because you're only going to have one line on this and we combine everything else later. I've been following this game since it came out. I never get it once all the machines come in. I have fun watching others playing and seeing how long I keep my own dupes alive. Maybe one day something will sink in. Lol. Yo, man, I'll make a guide for you, Avian. We'll, we'll have something like that eventually. Alright, so the one thing I do need to check for this, though, is how the reset works. We got to go up to 10. I think because of the self reset, it doesn't work. But I need to make sure this is something that's feasible.
All right, and the last one. So it goes green, and it resets, so I can't have that. Okay, so this signal is wrong. It does not feed into itself. So I'll pliers that, just to make sure. And how would I detect this? We could use this sensor. This is probably it. Because once the egg comes in, we could use that sensor to reset. And then since this is a red signal... Oh shit, someone's trapped? What do you mean, trapped? Wow, they lied to me. He wasn't actually trapped. Wow, they scared me, dude. I saw that right there. These, these AIs telling me I'm trapped when I'm not. Okay, so... Right now, we have a... Green signal. If this is a green signal, this is open. This needs a not gate. We reverse this signal. And then once we get an egg, it resets. Wait a second. Wait a second. So we have an egg in here. This becomes red. And that shuts that off. If this is red, this is green. So it's resetting. So it would be like that, right? Just like that. I want to say that that works. So let's, let's think about this. So critter sensor. Uh, no egg sends green signal to open the chute. Once the egg is here, this is a red signal. Red signal sends this to a green. This resets the signal. So that turns off this, and this becomes red. Which is basically what we have now. Now the problem is, is that... We are using an XOR gate into the signal switch... So, we send exactly one green, one red. Isn't what you want a conveyor meter? How does that help? I don't know how the conveyor meter helps. How does this change anything? I, I, I don't understand how this is helping me. This allows one egg through when I get a green signal. Isn't that the same thing as having a shoot with a signal on it? Like, is that exactly the same thing? You legit demonstrating how Oni eats hours of your time without achieving. Dude, the automation, man. There's a lot of dopamine that gets dropped when you're doing this. <laughs> There's a lot of dopamine, man. Trust me. I don't think the conveyor is what we need. I don't think that changes anything at all. Because the thing with the the thing is that it's still receiving a signal from the other automation, and then it just releases an egg. Exactly one egg. Which. I mean, you're not going to hold the eggs on the rail because they become raw egg like that. It blocks when enough items to pass, in your case, one, then blocks everything. Good thing is that you have a reset toggle. Hmm...
I guess I see your point because theoretically you only lose 5% viability at a time. And it outputs a signal when the limit is reached. So we send one egg, and then we wait 25 cycles. Wait, that doesn't change anything. Because it's, it's basically I replace a critter sensor and a shoot with a meter. Theoretically. Right? That, that's, that's the same thing. Because it's like... You could hold on to an egg, so I guess that means you need a setup like this. Where we go like this. Where we have a split in the fork. And then everything comes from a loader. And then we release one egg into the chute. Right? And then that way we get always one egg being held right here. But we would be doing 25 cycle trigger with that, which means we lose an egg due to viability on top of a rail, right? It's gonna eventually just decay because it's gonna be waiting for too long. So I, I, actively, it doesn't change anything because like everything else I still need. I still need the signal counter. I still need the six filter gates. I still need the critter sensor. No, actually I wouldn't need the critter sensor anymore though. So I would still need this, and I would still need the XOR gate. So instead of the critter sensor taking the signal, it's going to be the output. And then this does its thing and it comes into here. And then this goes into here. I would still need a critter sensor to reset this. So it actively literally just replaces the shoot and the critter sensor. Nothing else. I I don't think this is what I'm looking for. Because I don't want I don't want there to randomly be a raw egg pop-up. It's funny when I look at my automation and don't understand it later. Dude, it happens. Then. It happens all the time. <laughs> sometimes it's just it doesn't really click sometimes. It'd be like that sometimes. Okay, let's see if this works. So Ah, oh, man, I think I want a sandbox mode now. Feels bad, man. <laughs> a sandbox mode in this in this point is probably what I want to do. You know what, guys? Should I sandbox mode this? I don't know if I should. Because the thing is, is that I think we could do this. Sandbox is ending stream time, I know, right? It is, 100%. It is ending stream time. No lol, no sandbox. Because I need to figure out if the XOR gate works the way I need it to. I don't know if the XOR gate works the way I need it to. We gotta waste 25 cycles. Oh man. Alright, so let's get rid of this. We gotta get rid of it. Test world, yeah, that's what I was thinking about. But people say no, so we're gonna say no. Alright, so XOR gates. Uh, we could go like this. No, it doesn't work. So that's like that. This goes into here. This goes into here. And then we got to run the filter setup. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. 
here, 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 here. That one just jumped into the fish tank. Damn, man, they want to take a swim. You just got to stay on the map. Yeah, man. Isn't that the point of Oni? To learn from our mistakes. That's true. That is true, man. Elthar is right. We got to learn from our mistakes. We're going to sacrifice a couple fish, boys. It's okay. I don't like fish. So, uh, that's a, that's a willing sacrifice I'm willing to make. All right. So this is coming in. So let's put this to two. So once it hits two, we're going to get a green signal. Oh, I need a... Yeah, exactly two is broken. Wait a second, did I do my extra gate wrong? How the hell? Did I do this wrong? It's supposed to flip-flop. So this filters that. Oh, I think it's like this. Nope, it's not like that. How did I do this before? Why isn't this flip-flopping? So this goes out uh, into here. And then this feeds into here, which feeds into that. So two green is a red. This resets from here. Nothing happens. Yeah, it's supposed to be like that. Was the filters supposed to be fed from the XOR gates? That's, that's supposed to be what's happening, right? I think I messed that up. No, I'm not going to do that, Leo Far. Cut off the critter sensor? I, I don't know if that does anything. Wait, how am I doing this wrong? So, green signal. Yes. We get one from the critter sensor, and then this also powers the filter. This is a red signal until we count down the cycles. Once we count down the cycles, we get one, you know, then it's double green, and then nothing happens. That's the problem. Okay, so what I need to have happen is... On the XOR gate, I need to get a green signal from somewhere, which is probably going to be the critter sensor. And then the filter gate. Wait, what? Is it something weird? Did I do something wrong? Is it supposed to be like this? No. I did it just right now. How did I mess it up? Is this the right gate? It is XOR. What the heck? No. Buffer keeps the signal. Uh, I mean, we could use either or. But... Buffer would hurt us in the long run. So filter is actually better. How am I supposed to do the XOR gate? Uh, so one green, one red gives me a green signal. So we are... We get a red signal and then becomes green. And then we need to start counting down days with that. So once we do that and we start counting down, this is going to count two cycles. And it turns this on. And then once this gets one green signal... We need to get a flip-flop. How did I do that before?
wait a second. How did I do that before? Cycle sensor starts counting regardless of if, if we need it to count or not. So eventually, it's not going to be aligned with the Paku lifespan anymore. How did I do this? What the hell? So here we had a signal switch. That's a constant green. And then Oh, before that we had to do a AND gate. I'm missing a gate. Oh, come on, dude. I think I'm missing a gate. So this basically goes like that, like that. And then we have a filter. And then the idea is once we're ticking down, this starts. Wait, is this even correct? No, I think that's wrong. Well, didn't I do it with just one XOR gate? We did use a filter before. And then we did use a green signal from the critter sensor to power the filter. That's how that's supposed to happen. And then the second critter sensor is separate as it should, and that's an AND gate as it should be. And then we had this in here. But it doesn't flip-flop the filter, and that's what I need. So th I think there was an AND gate or something. We do that. AND gate goes into the XOR gate. And then we have a filter here. Right? All those connects. And then let's say it goes like that. This goes like that instead. This comes in like so. So we get a filter. Green. But there's no signal here. Oh. Wait, hold up. I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing something fundamentally wrong. Something's not clicking. I'm supposed to hit the green and then the red and then everything's supposed to flip-flop as a result. Yeah, this cannot be consistently green. I think that's the problem. So we have to do the critter sensor into the XOR. Ah, the order of operations. Yes. It's like this. Literally like that. So what happens is, is that Filter gate. This counts and gives you a green signal after X amount of seconds. We have a green signal, meaning that we need to drop off critter. The Paku just left the room, basically. And then what happens is, is that we have a green signal. This starts counting down on the filter. This is a XOR gate, meaning that we only send a signal once it's one green, one red. This is green, this is red. When this sends out a green signal, because this is red automatically, because this is off, and this has to receive a signal for 600 or 1200 seconds. This basically sends a signal to reset and then sends one to the signal counter at the same time. So this is gonna be 1200 seconds. And then if I send a green with a green, the XOR gate makes this a red, which resets this into a red again. 
which means it starts the countdown over again. Yeah, there we go. That's how I messed it up. So what I had before was actually correct. Okay, God damn it, I actually had it correct. I hate this game. I freaking hate this game. <laughs> oh man, I put the gates behind and not in front. We will take the pacifists. All right, so it's probably going to be like this. And then the filter gate is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So this feeds into that, which also doesn't feed into this. This goes like that, here, 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 here. So this is a bypass signal. That's how we do the flip-flop. There we go. Okay, so now let's think about this. We're doing the signal counter, right? Which means we're going to count for another two cycles. So that's enough time for this to be reset, I think. forcefully because as we're counting down we're waiting for an egg once the egg appears this resets but while it's resetting doesn't this also work i think this is flawed slightly very slightly I think it is flawed. Right? So this is at 2 to send a green signal. It's sending a green signal right now. So let's argue from here. This still ticks down until we get a critter. Maybe we check the eggs as well. No critter, no egg. So that when we have an egg in here, this doesn't roll. That technically should fix everything. And that's theoretically the play. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think this is it. So we do that. Okay, cool. So I will test this design outside of stream. But, uh, you know, we got to fill up the water tank. <laughs> we got to fill this up, man. I got to do all the things. We're going to use mealwood seeds. Because we have, like, just endless amounts. And then we got to tame a fish anyways. So that should be fine. Uh, fill that with water. It's probably going to be a setup like this. And I'm probably just going to have to load her by the door. So it's going to come out like that. We should have been doing that while thinking. I know, right? We should have been. So then the egg after it passes through the chute, we need to take this to a separate room. That's going to be by the kitchen. Uh, so I need to take this line to the kitchen. I think we were just going to take a straightforward line like this. Let's go down to this floor and then go to it. I want to be under the food hall when this happens. And then I want this to go upwards. We're going to have a bridge right here. And then this is going to basically feed out into this zone. We are not going to be doing anything with the eggs. Oh... That's a problem. I have to make a one tile storage like this on this side. That's a very interesting problem, but it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, 
I guess we could replace the tiles here. So we don't need the micro mushroom. I just wanted to see it's 50 kilograms of water. I'm probably not gonna make tofu. I will have to make a weird setup here with the food storage. Alright, so we'll leave that like that for now. It should work. We have to remove that door though. We're gonna lose the kitchen. I'll put some airflow here though. And then I need to build a chute here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then afterwards, we need to pick up the raw egg. And the raw egg actually could go into here. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's actually close enough. So that all works. Ah, oh, good stuff, good stuff. TJ, what's good? Nice to see you over there. Hope you're doing well. Hope all is good in your part of the world. But what is good, TJ? Hope life is good. Life, life kind of sucks, but you know, we got to do what we can. <laughs> life kind of sucks, but we got to do what we can to, you know, make it better. Which mods do you use? Here we go. Those are the mods. I don't use fixed camera pan anymore because of the recent patch. Oh, what the hell happened here? Oh, another buried object. That needs to stop happening, dude. It looks like the food is uh, getting buried inside of the tiles. That's not cool. I don't even know what's inside. Nice. Good stuff, TJ. Good stuff, good stuff. Hopefully the new job is going to be uh, paying you bank. But, uh, dude, that sounds great, dude. Congratulations, my dude. When do you start? Have a good night, Twitch a night. Yo, man, this is a guy that goes around Twitch and says good night. I see you over there. Hope you have a great night as well, man. All right, good stuff, good stuff. So we got our power storage today. We have not enough oxygen. We got to release a little bit more, but we're out. We're actually out of O2. We're actually out of oxygen. Feels bad, man. Should start 20th of October if things go right. Nice. That is... That's a Saturday. What the hell? You start on a Saturday, dude? Feels weird, man. Right before Halloween. Six months contract. Nice, nice. Good stuff, good stuff. Hopefully it's a uh, very lucrative contract. Hey, Elthar coming in with the five gifted. Thank you so much. I see you over there. Thank you so much for the support. Chuo, XX Chuo, CS Bad Peanut, Irish Traveler, Dr. Duckling, and uh, Revelax. Dude, if I just said your name right now in chat, dude, you guys know who to thank. Elthar right there. Hook you guys up with a gift sub. And of course, welcome to the city. Enjoy the emotes, D20 dice ad free viewing. Don't forget that legit sub badge. Courtesy of the homie Elthar, man. Appreciate the support. Jewel right there, man. There he is. Thank you so much, though. Of course, hopefully the automation shenanigans made sense. I'm very sorry if that was uh, very confusing. But it works now. Well, it should work. Yeah, job doesn't take notice of weekends. It works on days off, days off, rotating. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I have a friend that has a job like that. He works for the gas company. And his job is... Uh, he works... 15 days and then he has uh five days off so he works 15 days straight and then he has five days off uh afterwards and it's literally like that days doesn't matter he just takes that on a uh, schedule so sometimes he works weekends sometimes he doesn't sometimes he's free on the weekdays sometimes he doesn't and he's like part of a rotating shift they basically swap out six people through the year and they all have a rotating schedule like that Something like that. But, uh, dude, nice to see you over there, man. Hopefully that works out, and it's uh, very nice. Testing, I see a Leo far. I see you over there. Well, thank you so much, Elthar, for the five gifted. 
All right, so I could actually get rid of this now. We got the Paku right there. We're going to move them soon. All right, so the Paku, we still got to test. We still got to fill it up. And then we need a... I thought I DC. No, you're here, man. You're here. Maybe you did DC. But you're back. And that's all that matters. All right, so... I guess the next thing we could build is probably a gold volcano tamer. <laughs> hey, is that new? It is. This is the Cuddle Pip. And you know what that means? He evolved from a regular Pip. So if you actually feed these guys Thimble Reed, which is added into a diet, they can now eat Thimble Reed, they will evolve to the pink ones. And the pink Pip's special ability is that they could hug eggs. When they hug an egg, the eggs get something called incubation. And this stacks with incubators. So you could increase the incubation rate of all your eggs. And the Cuddle Pips do it for free. So this speeds up how fast the eggs hatch. And then if you put the incubator on top of that, it's pretty pretty strong. But uh, just like a regular Pip, they still plant the seeds. And they also eat uh, Arbor Trees too. But uh, the hugging aspect is pretty cool. Because they could also hug dupes and it removes stress. So it's pretty sweet, not gonna lie. And uh, not only that, they're mad cute. The only thing that's cuter than this guy is Mamba. Oh, look at that, dude. He just got the hug. There's a space requirement small. Yeah, they have a smaller space requirement as well compared to every other critter. I believe it's one-fourth of the uh, required size. So I think it's like every critter needs... No, 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 it's four. Four tiles, right? So every critter needs eight tiles, except for Grub Grubs. They need, I think, 12. The Cuddle Pips only need four, right? Something like that. So then you could fit more uh, Cuddle Pips in a uh, ranching room. So you could actually add them into your other rooms and just reduce the amount of other critters by like one or two. And then you could make up the rest with Cuddles so that they could hug the eggs. It's pretty sweet. Cute hug bunny. Yeah, man. That they're uh, clay nose, dude. You got to start uh, appealing to the cuteness. They got the strats. They got the strats. Bubba Feta, what's good? I see you over there. Hope you're doing well. All right. So now the next thing we probably want to do is, uh, well, I want to actually get power before I actually tap into the gold volcano down there. But I do eventually want to tag into that. So we will want to do... A little bit of mining so let me grab this right here and then i want to start mining out the abyssal line because we're going to need the space hey fed 09 i hope i'm saying that correctly coming in with the prime thank you so much for using your prime on me out of all of the channels on twitch appreciate the support and thank you so much welcome to the city enjoy the emotes d20 dice ad free viewing don't forget that legit sub badge but thank you so much for the support Right, we're gonna do this for now like so and we're gonna mine across all the way there's a bisolite here so i'm not really worried about this warming up should be fine but there's a gold volcano right there we're gonna start taming but before we can actually do that i need to tap into the power and before we tap into the power i want to pressurize the room even though it is pressurized i want to add a little bit more oxygen so since we're out of o2 to use the canister emptier we're just going to remove that and we're going to add in a plastic vent and then we're just going to add it in from the uh, suit line that we have down there. The hydrogen vent tamer is uh, working beautifully. Self-powering, so it's uh, I don't have to spend some power on that. It's pretty sweet. And of course, we are going to take more dupes. I think we're going to take this guy that's scared of the dark. Yep. Oh, Mama's awake. I heard you guys talking smack about him, dude. So the K-Cows are still stacking up to 2 million. Can't really be mad about that. Alright, so we're building this pipeline. We're waiting for that. And I think we're going to continue building out the second half of the meal hall. So I do want to remove the fire poles and the whatnot. Uh, deconstruct the background buildings. Does this work? No. Uh, it's buildings, right? And then this removes fire pole and not the insulated stuff. Yes. This removes the ladder, but not the pipelines. That's what I'm looking for. 
There we go. Sometimes you don't want to debate yourself. Got to use the tooltips. I like your easy energy make with Hydrogen Team Geyser. Yeah, man. It's sweet, dude. You could actually do this without steel and make it self-cooling. I'm lazy. I wanted to use the Aqua Tutor that's right there. But you could actually make a design using gold because it never goes above 123 degrees Celsius for both this battery and this pump. And then you don't need uh, steel at all. But I just wanted to use steel because I didn't want to waste time. Because I actually have no gold on my map. <laughs> no gold, dude. What am I supposed to do without gold? We have the aluminum everywhere instead. So no gold shenanigans. Go, go, Volk. Yeah, that's why I want to tame it, dude. I want the refined gold. But the problem with this is that I can't use that gold to make pumps because I need raw gold ore. I do have enough for a couple of pumps, though. But I only have 150 kilograms from, uh, I think the printing pod hooked me up. So we need to make some space for the gold volcano tamer. It's probably... Gold has, like, no thermal energy, though. That's the problem. So I don't know if I can make it self-powering. That is going to be a little bit of an issue. Can't crush gold. Yeah, man. Does not go backwards. Imagine having a car that only goes forwards, dude. That's kind of what we have. Car only goes forward, no backwards. Alright, so this is good. Let's connect this. Release some oxygen into here. You have so many dupes. I'm going for 100, dude. Going for 100. You need to keep busy. Yeah. And here's the funny thing. I have an achievement that a lot of people say it's impossible to do when you have a lot of dupes. And it's called Job Suitability. We're going to do that after we get 100 dupes. That's going to be really fun. <laughs> That's going to be really fun. That's not going to be fun, by the way. I'm just memeing. That's going to be a hard time. <laughs> it's going to be a struggle, dude. Struggle shenanigans. Leo, wake up, B. Yo, man, take care of the babies. All right, so we're chilling with that. This is at 2,000. We'll just let this release till we're above 2K all around. I see, so you're a masochist. What do you mean? What am I doing that's uh, self-damaging? <gasps> Someone's dying. Come on, dude. Just, just mine. Oh, they gave up because of the schedule. Okay, they're free. They're free. Come on, foos, get out of here. Jump the gap. Y'all got this. Oh, jobs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Job suitability later. Yeah, I mean, I, I wanted the I wanted the meme challenge. It will count each dupe. We'll do at least one Aaron in suit. I have a strat. I have a strat that it's going to be a very stupid strat, but it's a strat. I'm going to make a room that's going to be super large. And we're going to have the jobs inside. So we're going to have to have 100 soup docks on the outside. <laughs> it's going to be ultimate memes, dude. Ultimate memes. It's going to be a tough time, man. Because it means we have to have 100 suits and 100 soup docks full of oxygen. It's going to be a fun time, I hope. But uh, yeah, it's going to be... Uh going to be a time, all right. It's going to be a time. But I heard it's impossible, so I want to check it out. He's back to sleep. Nice, nice. Just like Mamba. He woke up for a bit and then went back to napping. All right, so how's mining up the area? We're also filling this up with oxygen right now. Oh, it's max pressure. Not bad. Let them do the thing. So the uh, hot energy is basically going to start eating at the uh, warm area right here. That's at 24. This is going to cool this down slightly, but not by much. There's too much hot energy here. So we're just waiting for the dupes to catch up. We're adding water there with the water uh, bottle emptier. And then... 
I wish there was a graph that would show the average FPS from cycle one and forward. 100 suit docks, the pain. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, we're doing it for the challenge, man. I think we could do it, though. I think it's possible. It's just, it's just a lot of work. Arbor Seeds. There it is. We need to turn this off of Cuddle Pips. I think the problem is going to be is that later on, I'm going to have to play on 1x speed. I think that's going to be the problem later on. We have to be on 1x speed. That's a good way to analyze when we did something wrong. That is laggy. That's true. Lag is real. Oh my god. This guy is ignoring gravity. Never mind. He fell down. I thought he was stuck to the ceiling while tussle. Trussle. Alright, cool. He's back here now with the acorns. Plant the seeds. You know what to do. Alright, so this is going to be all the arbor trees we're going to want on the left side right here. That should be enough to power... I think it's going to be 12 ethanol distilleries. And then that's going to field three petroleum jets. When do you think you'd upgrade my CPU? Uh, I'm on generation 10 right now. And probably when generation 13 comes out. <laughs> I gotta wait for the next gen stuff to be cheaper, dude. Feels bad, man. That's probably gonna be... Wait, that's now? Gen, gen 13 just came out? Alright, when when graphics cards do not cost a thousand dollars. Oh, man. When graphics cards don't cost a thousand dollars, I'll think about getting upgrades. I'm still running a 1050 GTX. That's an old graphics card, man. Just saying. That's more on my list than upgrading my CPU. Because I'm running a 9600K right now. Oh my god, you remember me saying I was getting a cat? The cat sit for a month? He's awesome. But I thought he I was a real smart making him a bed on my desk. Every single time I stand up from my chair to grab a drink, I come back. He's in my chair, damn it. Yo, man. Kitty cats are after the warmth. And I'm not going to lie, man. They will steal your spot. That's actually why. Next to me is a chair for Mamba. So that he doesn't steal my chair. Look at that. Mamba has his own chair. He heard me talking about him. He's looking at me. <laughs> I give Mamba his own chair, dude. You gotta be smart. Play should have the best specs for Oni chart. Updated per year. <laughs> it's tough, man. It's tough. Because it's like, they, they don't want to waste resources on that most of the time. It's like, why do we need that? We already have a minimum requirement to play the game. Right? They don't want to, you know, make the other people confused. Mamba's awake. The little babies is up and about. Alright, Mamba, I hear you. I hear you. Is it time, guys, to wrap things up for the night? The Mamba is awake. He's prowling. He's looking for head rubs and wet food. And guys, I think this is going to be a good place to wrap it up for the night. We got balloons, baby. They need to add different color balloons. That's what I think should be added in. They need to make it so that every balloon artist has a different color. So that you know who passed out the balloons. So if you have a colony of like 10 balloon uh, artists, you get like 10 different colors. And they could mix and match and that'd be a lot cooler, I think. And it wouldn't be too hard. You just go into the, you know, Photoshop, do the paint spill, different color and you're done. That's a very easy, like, graphical change. The only problem you would be is, like, how do you make it so that each dupe has separate colors? I think they got it at a park. Yo, man. They have a balloon artist working there. Alright, let's test out the automation because you guys want to check it out. So, we're going to be wrapping things up right here. 